Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pass Millie's Point. Um, before we get the video started, what I'd like to say is uh, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Thank you. You love me. You really love me. Um, I've been gone for uh, a couple weeks off the channel. Basically did a little staycation. Did some work around the house, you know, I was very busy, so I just didn't have time really to, to make a video. Uh, plus, I felt like I've been pretty consistent since I started, so it was nice to get a little break. But now I'm ready to get back to grinding. So, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Please, please like, comment, and subscribe. I want to hear what you have to say. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an awesome video. That being said, let's get to the point. So today's episodes going to be mainly since there's not a lot of things really going on there's really no sports there's no you know movies and the movie theaters coming out not a whole lot of series are coming out I decided to talk about uh, what I've been watching lately especially being on this staycation I've had a chance to uh, catch up on watching some TV shows so I wanted to talk about that before I get into that portion of it I did want to talk about uh, two things that I found out this morning um, number one being, uh, if you're into video games uh, for Xbox One and PS4, looks like they are doing a, a remake, remaster of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. They have a trailer out and everything on YouTube. I can put the link down in the uh, description so you guys can check it out. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I played the shit out of that game. That game was amazing. I can't even tell you how many hours I logged on there. And it's all the classic places, all, all the classic venues, classic skaters, the classic music, which everybody loves. So I'm very excited for that. And that is coming out September 4th of this year. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting it. Definitely going to buy it. Um, I don't really care how much it costs because I, I enjoy the two games. It's, it's more of like a nostalgic thing for me. Hopefully they go on to remaster or recreate some of the other Tony Hawk games. Uh, Tony Hawk Underground, Tony Hawk American Wasteland. Those are a couple of games that I really enjoyed as well. Um, also, probably about 30 minutes ago, found, <clears throat> found out that there is a, a leak online saying that originally WandaVision and Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier or you know Falcon Winter Soldier, uh, was supposed to have a trailer at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, but obviously that's been canceled because of the whole COVID-19. Um, so they're going to do like an at-home San Diego Comic-Con, like a virtual one, and apparently that is where the trailer is going to drop. So it, it's not a, a for sure thing, but obviously there's a lot of people out there who know other people, who get leaks from people. I, I would imagine it's pretty credible, so you're looking at some time in the middle of July for both of those trailers to drop. And what I've, what I've heard or what I've listened to and what I've read, it is saying that those are not just a 30 second trailer, it's a whole 2 minute, 30 second clip from the show. So I am definitely stoked for that, I cannot wait for that to come out. Um, with those two little additions to uh, the rest of the video, let me get in and start talking about uh, what I've been watching. So today, and recently, just recently, uh, we bought Apple TV, me and my wife. It's like $5.99 a month or something like that. Super cheap. Uh, definitely felt like it was worth getting for one show that we wanted to watch. Uh, my cousin was telling us about how good it was, but I want to talk about another show that we ended up watching after uh, the first one. Uh, Truth Be Told is the name of it. So uh, apparently it's based on a book. Um, so far the show is excellent. It's got uh, Octavia Spencer in it. She gives an amazing performance. Um, her husband, I, I don't know his name in the show, the, the guy who plays her husband, but he's been very, very good. Um, Aaron Paul's in it, you know, uh, Breaking Bad, Jesse Pinkman. So, and then he's excellent in it. Also, like I've, if you listen to one of my other uh, videos, I talk about Lizzie Kaplan and how I'm a big fan of her. She plays a pair of twins and she plays both parts and she's very good because they're both very different. Uh, so her acting in it is incredible. 
Also, uh, you know, I didn't look up every actor's name, but uh, Octavia Spencer's dad in the show, if you watch Luke Cage, it's the uh, older older gentleman who is always at the barber shop who helps, you know, kind of coach Luke Cage. So the acting is, is pretty excellent. And basically, it's a whodunit. Uh, Aaron Paul's put in prison for a murder that he committed when he was young, but now Octavia Spencer's character, like a reporter, she starts going through some of the things and starts to find out that maybe it was wrong. They were wrong. They put a they put somebody in prison that doesn't deserve to be there. It's basically like a who done it. Was it Aaron Paul's character? Was it the twins? Was it someone else? And it keeps going on from there, and it's it's very good because you get you know some investigative investigative journalism, um, and like I said, the story is pretty pretty good. Um, it, and right now we haven't even finished it; we're only on episode six, maybe seven. So I don't even know how the ending goes, but there is a couple twists in there already, and I, I'm really enjoying that. That's how long Warren Kane has sat in prison for the murder of Chuck Berman. I help seal Warren's fate with a series of articles. Is there an innocent man in prison? And did I lead that charge? But the real reason we got Apple TV is for Defending Jacob. Now, Defending Jacob stars Chris Evans. That's Captain America. And if if, if you listen to videos on the channel before, you know that I'm a big Captain America fan. I'm a big Chris Evans fan. I mean, the guy, the guy looks amazing. He's got the perfect hair, the perfect beard. He wears a suit and it fits him like a glove. It's crazy. Dumb joke. Do you have any idea what this looks like? Joking about being a murder suspect? It's not like anyone even knows who it is. Everybody knows. How do you think I know? Anyways, uh, his wife is played by Michelle Dockery, who I've seen before in a show called Good Behavior that my wife was watching. So she's in that and she gives a, a very powerful performance. The kid from It, I can't say, I think his name is Jaden Martell. He's also in it, and he's pretty good as the kid. And Pablo Schreiber is in it. And he's not in it a whole lot, but he is a good character because he makes you dislike him a lot. Um, so I really enjoy his character. He's like another lawyer that works with Chris Evans. But anyways, the story is basically about um, a kid gets found murdered, and... They're trying to say that it's Chris Evans' son, who is played by Jaden Martell from It, and they're trying to pin it on him, and Chris Evans is a lawyer, and he's trying to figure out uh, if it was really him, but they take him off the case, so then he goes all Chris Evans and... Language! He's the good guy, and he takes the law into his own hands type of thing. No, you killed him! Oh, Jesus, you're the father. Okay, um, please leave me alone. My son's not gonna go away because of you, you understand Stay me? Stay away from me! Hey! I know what you get! Um, it's only five episodes in. Uh, it's still coming out every week. But so far, it's pretty good. It's it's very... It's another whodunit, which is kind of weird that Apple TV has two whodunit shows on there. But it's, it's very intense. You know, you want to make... They keep pointing you towards his son in the show, that he's the one who did it. But there's always, like, a little thing where you're like, well, maybe it's not, or two other people are maybe conspiring against him or maybe he was bullied by the kid and the kid that was murdered. Uh, so, so far, it, it's it's very good. Like I said, it's very intense. I mean, obviously, if you're not a Chris Evans fan, you probably won't like it. I mean, Chris, it's like a Chris Evans role. He just plays a good guy. But the, the actress who plays the mother is very good. Uh, the actor who plays the son is very good. Um, I definitely, if I was you, if... if you can watch two episodes for free without paying for it. Check it out. I bet you. I bet you you'll pay the five ninety nine so you can finish it. Um, that being said, to to transition to the next thing, talking about Pablo Schreiber, which is in this show, I want to talk about Den of Thieves, which is now currently on Netflix and it's like trending number eight. Uh, before I get into the movie, let me talk about that trending on Netflix. I really love how they do the one through ten trending. It really gets you into finding out maybe what's popular. Sometimes what's popular isn't always what's for you, but I mean, sometimes it's good stuff. So this Den of Thieves, uh, it stars Pablo Schreiber. He's the bad guy and he, I mean, he is a great bad guy. He is excellent in it. 
Uh, Gerard Butler is like a hard-boiled cop. It's too early in the morning for your fucking circus. You, you just threw a donut in, in the hot zone. No, yeah. I did not. You did. I did? That was fucking wrong. It was. I don't like you. You have O'Shea Jackson, which is Ice Cube's son, who is also in it, and he's one of the, the bad guys. And 50 Cent is also one of the bad guys. Basically what it is, it's a heist movie. And it's based on these guys, 50 Cent, O'Shea Jackson, uh, Pablo Schreiber, and another guy who are trying to rob this bank in L.A., a bank that's never been robbed. And Gerard Butler is trying to stop them. And Gerard Butler's kind of an asshole in it. He's a cop who uh, like has no rules. He does whatever he wants kind of thing. And he's trying to go after him. And it's, it, it's pretty good. The beginning is excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, it starts off with a bang. And then you have the ending. There's a huge shootout. I don't want to spoil anything, but man, is there a huge shootout. And there's a huge twist in it that I personally didn't see coming, which made me really love the movie. I'll tell you what, Den of Thieves is a movie that I thought... I mean, it's starring these guys that I that I know, and nobody's talking about it. H how could that be? And then I watch it, and, and I realize, okay, maybe it, it's not talked about because it's so far-fetched, but it's a heist movie. It's a cop movie. That's how it is. You, you don't watch a movie expecting everything to be real. That's why there's sci-fi movies, and these heist movies aren't all real, but I'm telling you, if you like an action movie, you're going to love this. It, it's It's excellent. Definitely check it out. I'd give it a four and a half out of five stars, personally. Speaking of Netflix, I'd like to talk about Extraction. Now, I know Extraction's a little old. It's starring Chris Hemsworth. Um, now, the other people who are in the movie, uh, I don't want to butcher anyone's names because it's a, it's a bunch of people who, they're from India or Bangladesh, so they have harder names to pronounce. But there's a kid in it who's a, a, a central plot point, and there is... Uh, it's like a drug dealer's right-hand man who is very good in it as well. He, you know, he's pretty badass. Also, there's a special, like, cameo. Uh, I don't want to say who that is because I forgot that he was in the movie at all. I remember him in the trailer, but I, I forgot that he was in the movie at all until he shows up, so I don't want to ruin that for you. Um, basically, what the movie is about, a drug dealer whose kid gets stolen from another drug dealer in a country over and they hire Chris Hemsworth and a team to go in there and extract the kid and Chris Hemsworth is his normal you know badass self I mean he's just kicking ass taking names he kicks a table in the guy's face The, the stunt choreography is amazing. The fight between him and the drug dealer's right-hand man who's also trying to get the kid back is a great fight scene in the, in the middle of town. camera work which is something which is something I don't really pay attention to that much but the camera work is amazing I mean they're like literally following these guys as they're jumping on buildings and riding on a car and stuff like that and what I come to find out is that it's produced by the Russo brothers but it was directed by one of their stuntmen and I mean there's like a parkour scene where they're running around and it's like the camera is doing the parkour with them that's something that I noticed because it's so different. I enjoyed Extraction. It's definitely not as good as Den of Thieves. Extraction, I'd probably give it like a three out of five. But it was still it's still worth checking out. It's a Netflix original movie. I mean, Netflix is killing the game right now with their original stuff. You know, sorry to Apple TV and Prime and Hulu and all. I mean, Netflix is killing the game. Um, Next, let's see what else I was watching. I watched, uh, I started watching Star Wars Clone Wars on Disney Plus, and I know I'm kind of late to the party, 
It's eight seasons long. The eighth season just ended, I believe, um, last week or the week before that. But basically, this show follows Obi-Wan and Anakin and their antics between episode two and episode three. Uh, shows Anakin have a Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, and how he trains her and how she grasps a lot of the things that he does. So she follows him quite heavily and does what he says. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot of separate stories. So there's like it, it, there's like a main story and then there's like little separate stories like Yoda will have like a three episode story. Mace Windu will have a three episode story. Uh, what's really cool to me is that Kit Fisto has a three episode story and I'm a big fan of Kit Fisto. I know he's not in a lot of movies and stuff like that, but he's one of my favorite Jedi who's not mainstream. Originally it was uh, very hard to get into the show just because of the cartoon part of it, but what turned what, what made it good for me is that uh, once I got into it and I see these characters like General Grievous and Palpatine and Anakin and all these characters from the movie that you grow to love are also in this, it expands on the mythos of Star Wars and I really enjoyed that. Um, so, so far I'm only on season two, like episode nine. I got a long way to go, but I really like it. And I think it's cool. It's very action packed. You can, you can sit down and watch it with a kid, you know, and, and they'll be interested. Um, the last two things I've watched recently are in correlation. So I, I didn't want to say that, hey, everything I watched is new because I just watched Space Jam. And to me, I don't care what you say. People are going to say that Space Jam doesn't hold up. But to me, it's still a good movie. I love Space Jam. Love Michael Jordan. Love Space Jam. Love the Looney Tunes. And just the way the whole story plays out and Bill Murray's hilarious in it and all these little cameos and how they get the talent from the other uh, the other NBA players. They steal it to, to try and face the Looney Tunes and beat them. And they have to go get Michael Jordan. And this is what gets Michael Jordan back into basketball. I, I think it's cool. It it's a good story. It 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 and it's another one you can sit down with a kid and you'll both enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Now for the very last thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about The Last Dance, which is on ESPN Plus, uh, or ESPN, whatever you watch it on. Um, to me, it's the greatest sports documentary that I've ever seen in my entire life. You gotta be kidding me. And part of it is probably because I'm a, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, and Michael to me is the greatest basketball player to ever play basketball. Um, and. I think that the way it's put together is so well done. You learn a lot of things about that team. I mean, to me, I was always a big fan of Scottie Pippen, but in this show, in this documentary, they make Scottie Pippen look bad. And it's not because they make him look bad. Scottie Pippen's making himself look bad. And you learn things about Michael. Yeah, Michael might have been a little bit of a dick, but that's because he wanted to win. And if you didn't want to win, he didn't want you on the team. He forced you to be a winner. And that's why Michael Jordan was so successful. And there's, you know, back, like, uh, stories that you didn't know about, like Dennis Rodman going to Vegas and not coming back for a, f a week and he was supposed to be gone for two days. Or, you know, like, these guys, like Gary Payton, saying that, you know, he disrupted Michael Jordan in the finals. And really, it, it didn't have to do about that. It had to do with the death of Michael Jordan's father. And, Michael Jordan's dad not being there to watch him play in the finals. I mean, that's what really bothered him. And, and to me, I think that even though we're not at the end of it, and there's still two more episodes, even if the two episodes are not that good at the end, which I couldn't imagine that they're not going to be great, it's still the greatest sports documentary I've ever seen. It, it's it's insane the way Jordan tells these stories and the way you get Phil Jackson and Tony Kukoc and Scottie Pippen and all these other players. I mean, you even get Kobe's in there talking about him, how he was a mentor to Kobe. It's 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 great. And I mean, it truly is the last dance for that team. And it's so great to see how they came together to win one more championship. But I want to know what you guys are watching. Give me something to watch. Tell me something you like. Something that maybe I didn't mention. 
uh, something that maybe you think people haven't really seen, underrated movies, stuff like that, maybe other originals from Hulu or uh, uh, HBO or stuff like that, please let me know. But with that being said, folks, the episode's over. No! Don't worry, I'll be back again next week. Thank you. Everybody.